Our first three years here, we've primarily been a defensive team. Uh, we're working towards being more of a balanced team this year. Uh, that's our goal. And to achieve those goals, um, you know, we, we have to have a clear and definitive um, message and work ethic uh, every single day. But uh, I'm excited about this team. Uh, we're an older team, a more experienced team. Um, we had some guys that's been banged up here and there, but they're finally rounding into shape. And But we, we need to play a game in front of our home crowd, and that's why I'm excited about this game on, um, on tomorrow night. We have a long ways to go. Um, you know, there's ebbs and flows of the season. Um, you know, we, we, we just have to do a better job of, uh, you know, playing on both ends of the floor. Um, obviously, you know, transition defense, uh, especially when we're big. Uh, you know, we got to do a better job of communicating in transition. Uh, I thought we did a decent job uh, uh, rebounding the basketball, decent job, but we got to take care of the ball. Um, obviously, when you guys are in this room interviewing uh, Coach Saban, it's always about ball security and not throwing interceptions. Um, in practice, and we, we tend to throw too many of those. So we just got to do a better job of taking care of the ball, which I think is going to help us offensively. Uh, and then our real talent, uh, I think, will be able to come to the forefront. They'll feel better about themselves when they don't turn it over because we'll get more shots at the basket. We'll be able to get our defense set. We'll be able to rebound the basketball. But we just have to do a better job with ball security. Yeah, we think we've shot five times uh, more threes than we shot historically in the off season since I've been here. Um, but to be able to shoot threes in the game, you you got to be in maximum shape, and you have to know how to get open. You know, we got to set good legal screens because if a guy comes off a wide open three and the screen's not legal, um, then we're going to get called for an offensive foul. So everybody just needs to be synchronized. Uh, also, offensively, I think we need to slow down a little bit once we are in the half court. Uh, we just got to do a better job of uh, body positioning and timing and all those things hopefully will come with time. Coach, Coach uh, Daryl Puckett, Alabama News Network. How important is it to have Riley Norris and you know to have that senior leadership, especially around those younger guys, and uh, and having Colin gone in the NBA, how important is it to have him out there? Well, it's important to have Riley, um, as well as Dante Hall, who's a senior. Dejon Ingram's been in the program. This is his fourth year. He's a redshirt junior. Uh, Daniel Giddings is a redshirt junior. Tevin Mack is a redshirt junior. Avery Johnson Jr. is in, in graduate school. Or that's what he told me he was in graduate school, but I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but I just think we're an older team. So it's not just pointing at one guy for offensive production, defensive production, um, three-point shooting experience. Hopefully our strength will be in numbers this year. Um, but having uh, guys like Tevin Mack that set out, Riley obviously who got the medical red shirt, having those guys back for whatever amount of minutes because, you know, we don't have a rotation yet. But whether you play five minutes or 12 minutes or 25 minutes, it's really about doing your job and doing it on a consistent, repetitive basis, and that gives us a better chance to win. Coach, uh, I was wondering if you still keep in touch with Colin and, and how have you, how would you evaluate kind of the early part of his NBA career? Yes, we keep in touch with him. Uh, we went to his first home game. Uh, Coach Yasir, um, Roseman, uh, my wife and I, along with some other uh, friends, we went to the game and supported him and just excited to see him. And um, their team didn't have their best game, but, you know, he, he's, he's going to do great. 
And obviously, they've just had a coaching change. And, you know, Tyron Lue played for me when I coached, coached him at, with the Mavericks. So I know him really well. But, um, you know, he, he's in transition right now in terms of going from college to the pros. And, you know, they haven't even played 10 games yet. Uh, and, and their team is looking to rebound uh, from losing the best player in the world. So he, he's getting integrated in what they're doing, and he's awfully happy, you know, to be where he is. But obviously he wants to win. And hopefully their team will get healthy and get their season turned around. Uh, Coach, last season, his freshman year, John Petty was able to come in and make an immediate impact. Uh, what are some specific goals you have for him during his sophomore season? I just think be an elite shooter. Um, w w when you talk about shooters around college basketball, we want his name to, to be one of those guys that consistently come up, that he's an elite shooter at home, on the road, neutral site games, because if he is, that makes Alabama better. Uh, but also he's improved his interior passing. And, you know, all of our guys, all of them, every single one of them have to improve defensively. So uh, I just think, you know, him being an elite shooter is going to help our offense because we know he'll be uh, taking and making shots for us. Coach, I have a two-parter. How's it going? Hey. Uh, t tomorrow's game, you, you talked about wanting to develop an identity, also kind of working on the rotation. What's the biggest thing you want to take away from tomorrow's game and early games in this season? And also, Lawson Schaefer, what type of significance does he play as a leader on this team, emotional leader? Well, Lawson is uh, – I'll answer your second question first. Lawson is a, one of our best leaders. Uh, he provides so many uh, leadership lessons, uh, especially for our team. Uh, he's a great guy to follow, hard worker, you know, does what he needs to do in the classroom. Uh, whenever we put him in the game, obviously the fans are always excited to see him. But, um, you know, I, I told him he's a, he's a future CEO somewhere in the world. Uh, he said, well, coach, what about an NBA player? I said, well, you're asking for too much. <laughs> but um, he, he's been a great guy to coach. He's got a terrific family. Um, they obviously love the university. He loves Alabama. Um, so he's, it's just been a joy for me to get getting to know him and help him grow into manhood and helping him grow in terms in the areas of leadership. Um, tomorrow, I think when the game's over, obviously I want to know we took care of the ball. We rebounded the ball well. Uh, we defended the three-point line at a high level because teams like Montevallo, they, when they come in, one of the ways they want to beat you is from behind the three-point line. Uh, because sometimes they're n not nearly as big or at athletic, but they're going to try to play fast and take take quite a few threes. So we have to do a bit, good job of defending the three-point line and also getting those long rebounds. You know, we're a team that needs to get more of those 50-50 long rebounds around the free throw line, which can ignite our break. And we, we need to score more in transition this year by having five guys run instead of having one guy turn on the Jets like we did last year and he outrun everybody. I think we got to do it more collectively this year and we're capable of it. All right, last question up here with Mark. As a coach, would you prefer to have a guy who's sort of a go-to scorer emerge above the pack or do you like to maybe by committee? Well, I like it by committee, but I hope in the last four minutes of what we call the last round of the game, that tenth round, I'm hoping that we got a guy that if we need to get a bucket or make a play for us, we'll have somewhere to go. And, you know, we have quite a few guys that's kind of trying out for that situation. And uh, I think it was a little bit more clear cut last year than it is. And I'm hoping that'll make us harder to scout. Whereas if we're in that situation, you know, maybe the defense don't know that it's going to be Herb Jones on a post up or maybe Tevin Mack on a three point shot or, you know, maybe a, a one of our big guys on a post up. So hopefully the, the defense won't know um, this year in terms of their scouting when they come out of a timeout, they're saying, hey, for the next three possessions, they're going to that guy. So we better do a good job of defending him or trying to deny him the ball or trapping him. Uh, so hopefully that'll add a little bit more versatility uh, in the, into our end of game execution.